Kevin Van Valkenburg works for ESPN senior writer. He was at the press conference and kind enough to join us. Um, Kevin, how would you recap what happened at that press conference? Uh, Dan, I would say that it was about as expected. A lot of talking points about just the, just a golfer, not a politician. I just want to grow the game. I just want uh, to make sure that everybody around the world gets a chance to, to be a uh, experienced golf in a fun, exciting shotgun start team format. Uh, and then some, uh, you know, I would say a few pointed questions about some of the um, moral conflicts or justifications that uh, some of this required. Uh, it got a little bit heated at one moment. And um, I, I think, you know, uh, Graham McDowell, to his credit, tried to give some answers that were more than just, uh, hey, I'm, I don't want to talk about uh, politics. I just want to talk about golf. And, you know, stepped it in, in a little bit in his own way, too. Um, <laughs> I, I think it was a little bit of surprising that Dustin came out and said uh, up front that he was resigning. Uh, I wasn't sure if, you know, maybe he was going to go through uh, some of the kind of legal battles that uh, some of the players are talking about if this happens. But he was up front and basically saying, like, yeah, I don't really care about the PGA Tour it was great to me for when I was there, and now I'm moving on, and this is what I want to focus on. So uh, it was interesting. It's likely going to get more interesting tomorrow if they uh, bring Phil Mickelson out as expected, and uh, that's what uh, a lot of the reason people are waiting here to see. I'll give you one question for Mickelson. What would you ask? Uh, I think I would say to Phil, you know, a lot of people uh, who say this stuff, you know, I'm not a politician. Taylor Gooch said today, you know, I'm not smart enough to understand this. Phil has always believed that he is smart enough to understand everything. <laughs> so Phil is one of the few people who you would expect to say, like, all right, how have you weighed all of the sort of moral complexities of this? This, some of the whataboutism stuff, I don't think really, um, you know, what about China? What about, you know, the things you have done? You know, this is directly working for the Saudi Arabian Public Investment Fund, which is controlled by Mohammed bin Salam. This is not, you know, setting up a business in China. This is not, you know, a, a sort of a proxy of building iPhones somewhere. This is directly working for the public relations of a country that has, you know, been not only, you know, brutally murdered a journalist, according to, you know, the CIA and intelligence, but also has done a lot of terrible stuff in terms of like to lesbians and, and gays and around the world and has, you know, treated dissidents with, you know, swift and sort of you know, brutal uh, punishments. So, you know, you can sit there and say, hey, you know, I, I don't uh, I don't really care about that stuff. Um, but I think that it's sort of every rule journalist's kind of right and maybe expectation to at least ask to say, have you waited? And someone like Phil, it would be impossible for him to say like, no, I haven't waited because he sort of believes that he's thought about everything. What's the media strategy here with the Live Tour? That like, what what is their end game? I think the the live golf strategy is really just to sort of put on a product that um, they hope is entertaining. And I would say mostly uh, the who attends it and who watches it is less to do with like their larger reputation of, um, you know, increase uh, business investment in, in the, the kingdom. I think that you know, if, if any of your listeners want to go and find a, a really interesting article in the Atlantic that Jeffrey Goldberg wrote, where he literally interviewed Mama bin Salam, it talks a lot about the really complicated dynamics of the sort of the kingdom there and how as much as kind of Mohammed bin Salam has been, you know, kind of cast as the bad guy in a lot of ways, that it's, it's a lot more complicated than just that because it, in some ways he's progressive for Saudi Arabia. And so, he wants to bring in a lot of uh, a lot of business investment, and so you know there are a lot of kind of difficult questions to answer. And I think that a lot of journalists and a lot of golfers, particularly, haven't done really enough kind of research and reading to understand all of the complex of issues. I don't. I certainly don't have the answers, but I think it's important to kind of talk about the questions and see where everyone kind of you know plays out on it. Where do they stand on broadcast partners? None so far. I, I've heard, I don't know this for certain, but I've heard that they've tried to give it away to various broadcast partners and haven't been able to find anyone. It, this event for now will be broadcast uh, on YouTube. So give so it you away. Can find it there. Yes, they are currently giving it away. Uh, you know, I think they look at, they've said a couple of times that this is a startup. 
and they are viewing it like, you know, we're figuring it out in some ways as we go. And so I don't know if you know, some of the people saw like they're, they released, uh, you know, teams names this week and they look like they're using like clip art for some of the kind of, uh, team logos and stuff. It's, it's not a super slick <laughs> operation, but you know, it also, there is a lot of professional people involved and there are a lot of people who are trying to get it right. I, I think, you know, you're trying to sort of view this objectively. Is it run like a, a regular PGA tour golf event or a major? No, but, uh, you know, it's, it's, they're, they're trying to figure it out as they go. And you have to kind of look at it like that on some, some things. Did anybody say I just did it for the money, Kevin? Uh, not today. They did not. Uh, and that question was uh, posed to them directly. Like, why not just sort of say, hey, you know, it's, it's all about the money. And uh, because I think that deep down, if you could give them truth serum, that that's what probably a lot of them would say. And you know what? That's fine if that's how they feel. Uh, mostly they kind of deflected into, you know, it's exciting. I'm, there was a lot of talk, which I sound sort of funny about how the shotgun start means that no one gets a bad side <laughs> of the draw, <laughs> and, you know, as if that was a major con- point of contention in, <laughs> in professional golf as I've been screwed by the bad draw so many times <laughs> I have to start a new league. <laughs> so, <laughs> Oh, uh, uh, yeah. For, I, I wish somebody <laughs> would just say, I couldn't pass up the money. Uh, before I let you go, will or how should the PGA Tour respond today? You know, I think that uh, the PGA Tour, probably as a business, uh, has every kind of right to sort of try to protect their business. I mean, no one is saying that these guys can't come play over here. They're just sort of saying, hey, you know, you're not going to get to bounce back and forth between both tours. Can you do that as a setup as a nonprofit? I think that's a really complex legal question. Uh, I think that, you know, looking like a few years down the road, it would probably, if this continues, if it does have success, it would make sense for the PGA tour to say, Hey, you know, we, we couldn't kill this. We couldn't stop it. It's okay for the, the guys to bounce back and forth because it doesn't benefit us to say like, what if Rory McIlroy leaves? What if, you know, Scotty Shuffler leaves? All of a sudden you're going to say like he wants to compete in the Arnold Palmer Invitational and you're going to say, no, sorry. Like doesn't that sort of screw over the Arnold Palmer Invitational? These places that are, are desperate to get the best players. And so I think it's going to be a really complicated issue. There, there are probably wishes that it just fails and, does, and goes away. But, you know, the the live investments has so much money that I think that they don't, they're not running this to try to make a profit. They're not even running to try and break even. They're just running it to sort of, you know, kind of fix their reputation globally for business partners. Kevin, great stuff. We appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us. You bet, Dan. That's Kevin Van Valkenburg. He's uh, ESPN senior writer joining us uh, from London.